Good evening, good afternoon, and good night. Hope everyone's having a fantastic life. Yes. I'm Cameron Van Hoy. Always good to be here. I want to talk about my vision for the future of film, entertainment, and media, because I think it's changing rapidly. Um, God, you know, I love the movies. I've grown up loving the movies. I love storytelling in general. I love world building. I love character. You know, I love dialogue. It's just, there's something about all of that, which, you know, just fills me to the bone. And I think it's like that for a lot of humans, you know, story is such an important part of our existence. We've been telling stories around the fireplace for a long time. And the proverbial fireplace in many ways has evolved as well from an actual fire, maybe outside around a bunch of stones to like a, you know, an iron fire and like a stove somewhere. And then like to the, you know, the movie theater and then to the radio and then to the television and even our cell phone now, and who knows next, maybe VR, some experience like that. Um, but we're always sitting around this proverbial fire telling and sharing and enjoying story. It's such an important part to our existence. We learn so much about ourselves and culture and others. We tap into our cores as humans. We're reminded of our vulnerabilities and we have cathartic moments. We laugh and all kinds of things. So I love story and I'm sure you do as well, but it's changing, you know, it's changing and it's kind of bittersweet, you know, um, look, I came up during a time of the blockbuster. Those were the movies that I loved. And, and that was a very new thing. And I'm sure there were a lot of people that were frustrated by the blockbuster when that happened, right? Because they came from an old world where as an example, a filmmaker would release a movie, it'd go through theaters for a year before it started really blowing up. You know, that's how movies used to roll out in theaters. Just from the 60s, 70s into the 80s and 90s, that big change must have been monumental. You know, and it was just a completely different culture. Now, all of a sudden, you got to hit the theater and crush it right off that first weekend. And then maybe you last there for like four months, which now, I mean, now it's not even you're in the theater for like two months and you're out, you know, and it just keeps incrementally getting smaller and smaller. But the theatrical experience, whatever it was, whether it was, you know, pre the blockbuster era or even post the blockbuster era, it's becoming more niche and more nuanced. Um, less people are going, more people are enjoying short form content and social media and different forms of engagement, right? Which it might not have like the high budget, high value kind of imagery and storytelling that someone like me prefers, but yet there's a whole bunch of people that just like simple engagement, simple stories and conversations held by regular people that they're able to kind of feel connected with to some degree, which is really interesting. So, I mean, you know, you look at all that and you look at the way things are going. I just want to talk about where I think film and media could be going because it's certainly changing. Um, so I guess, you know, one of the first things is like, because of blockchain, we're going to have more meaningful, more valuable relationships with IP and with holders of IP and various assets. This is going to change the game. Okay. So you can start looking at like creative communities that are built around certain projects and they all hold a piece of that project, whatever it may be. You know, as Star Wars is an example, you could. If Star Wars was done today using this technology, you could make every character their own unique character. Yoda, Boba Fett, Han Solo, Princess Leia, Luke Skywalker, all of them, they could all be their own little assets, digital tokens represented by a token, the character, and distributed amongst a community. And there's, you know, holders of each of those characters, or a community could all hold one poster of which there might be 100,000 of those posters, but that's it. And that poster gives you access to the Star Wars ecosystem. It gives you some kind of a value back from the ecosystem. It gives you say over the ecosystem to some degree and like this ultra engagement. Um, there's many ways to kind of look at this technology, but the cool thing about blockchain is that it's true ownership in a more metaphysical, more digital world, which is something we've never really had before. So the implications of that are absolutely massive. And I think that's going to completely change the way communities, viewers, and fans build themselves around IP and around stories and around movies. So that's one big change that I see that's coming. And, and you can see this with a lot of different projects um, within the Web3 space or the Film3 space. There's a lot of cool stuff. The next thing is like Unreal Engine. 
Unreal Engine and visual effects and what's happening there is really awesome. And I, I'm going to share my screen and show you some things that are exciting me. Um, so to begin with, this is Unreal Engine, right? I'm sure we've all seen this before. And if you haven't, it's pretty wild, the stuff that they're coming up with. But, you know, these are graphics that are built within this playground, really. It's a digital playground where creators can go in and place cameras. And you'll see here as an example, that's a camera right there, right? It's a virtual camera. That's another camera right there. That's an actor. And it's looking at, the, at this location here. And you can place light sources all around. And you can do all kinds of things and really create very intricate worlds that you can tell stories within. And, and they call it an engine, right? So it kind of is like probably like a you know, final product. They call it an engine because you can do a lot of things in it. Uh, you can create games, gameplay, where you have characters that understand the basic physics of an environment. So like if there's a wall and you have a character, the character runs into the wall, they're going to hit the wall and the body will react in the right way. Or if they were to fall off the top of a mountain, they'll react in the right way. And you can add props and all kinds of things that they can take and play with and shoot guns. You really build out games, full game experiences. You build worlds for these characters to exist within and then move through the game. Right. And we've all played video games. Right. So you kind of get the idea, but it's not just games. You can also just create wonderful backdrops that can be projected on set or that you can place your actors in front of um, in person or virtually and really amplify your storytelling. Um, and so, you know, when you start to think about like potentially blockchain and creating, say, a group of characters, which is something that I've done for my latest project, Flinch. I'm going to show you here, right? So this is an NFT that I've created, one of 5,555. Uh, these are characters that exist within the Flinch universe, the Flinch franchise, right? This is the representation of that character. Now, there's various layers, right? This character happens to have a mask with dollar signs on it. He's got a, like a Versace style silk shirt, got a gold chain. He's got a diamond tooth you know, brown eyes, darker skin. Um, and this, this, this is a character, right? Now, someone owns this character. It's someone's character. And this character will be used in this larger franchise. So now I'm starting to play around with this platform called MetaHuman, okay? So MetaHuman is a place where you can create humanoid looking characters. And th this is what you're looking at here is not a real person. That is simulated in this program, this Unreal Engine program. Um, they look like people, but they're not people. The, and it's incredible how simply you can bring in maybe a scan of your own face, an actor's face, a digital character's face, um, and really make something that's very humanoid looking, very real looking, uh, and then place them within those worlds that I was showing you worlds like this, worlds like this, and have that character move around in that world in really funky ways um, and tell stories and, and, and build worlds. And there's many ways you can do it, right? You can create games out of it. You can create just film and cinematic moments out of it. So I personally am playing around with this character this was one of the first renderings that I had done of the character. And we're probably going to go in a different direction. We are experimenting now. We're working with the community and getting live feedback, which is one of the great things about working with a community when building IP, right? But it's like, this is an ultra realistic looking version. Still crude, still done quickly because we're, 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 you know, we're in build mode. But it's like, this is a realistic looking iteration of this character, right? It's like if you were to cast a person to play this animated illustrated character, you might get someone who looks kind of like this and put the mask and the shirt on it, right? Now we are working to build even more animated looking 3D realistic 
versions of all of these characters. And the great thing is that once we build out the base layer of the body and the face of each of our central characters, then we're just creating assets. We're creating the various hoodies, the various shirts, the various hair colors, the various hairstyles and hats and weapons, and then locations and all of these kinds of things. And suddenly you're creating worlds with your community that you can exist within and you can tell stories within that you can pump stories out of quicker. Right. So, you know, um, I want to share with you this other really cool project um, by this guy, fuck render, I think is what, what his name is. Um, he has an NFT and he's created his own world in unreal engine. Now, this world is less about storytelling. It's even less about gamification. It's more of like a, a trippy artistic experience, which is another really interesting way to use this. And you can enter with your MetaMask. That's entering with your wallet. When you enter with your wallet, you have a more personalized experience in this world. The assets that you own come into the world. The world changes per what you own. You might get other access to other things, see certain other things, be within your own character. And this is all the stuff that's becoming possible, right? So- we're not going to enter with MetaMask. We're just going to enter as a guest. I'll put CVH once my keyboard starts working. Um, what are we looking for? Bridges. That looks like a bridge. That looks like a bridge. And that looks like a bridge. How do we do? We're human. Um, Yeah, so he calls this a collective dream, right? Now, okay, wonderful. Join the collective dream. Forward, back, right. Got it. We're in queue to get in. So you start to realize that like, you know, video games got introduced, what, in the 80s, and they became, they became somewhat more sophisticated throughout the 90s, early 2000s. They started getting really wild. And now, I mean, it's just absolutely incredible what we're seeing vr headsets even though everyone's like you know goofing on the metaverse and vr at the moment they, the technology still gets stronger and stronger and you, you you have to wonder if storytelling in general in all of these mediums you know blockchain technology unreal engine style technologies game technologies and then of course like cinematic technologies and principles storytelling principles are all meshing themselves in to where users are going to have these What's going on with this? Join, we're still joining the dream, huh? Still waiting for the dream. Um, are going to have these personalized, really engaged experiences where we'll be telling stories as communities and sharing in those stories and building out worlds together um, and existing within them and coming in and out and then allowing other people to come within these ecosystems. Um, so here we are. Here's this world. So, you know, in this specific world, you can kind of, you know, look around like this, look at various characters, and then you use your keyboard to just maybe like move into one character into one world. Let's see. Oh, we went past him. We went past that character. Um, let's go into this sphere here and see where it takes us. You know, like we're just exploring. That's all you're doing here. You're just exploring. And again, the tech is quite crude at the moment, okay? Oh, where are we going? The tech is quite crude at the moment, but you can start to see where this technology is taking us. Kind of like the early days of social media. It was pretty crude, right? Even the early days of the internet was very crude. Dial up, it was a little clunky. Uh, maybe using MS-DOS to, to even like do anything on a computer early on, I remember those days. Um, but slowly over time, the experience for the user became more and more exciting, easier, lifelike, realistic, comfortable. Uh, that's all going to happen with this storytelling world that we're, we're coming into now. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to share these thoughts with you as I continue creating myself and trying to find new and innovative ways to tell stories um, without abandoning the old world and the principles of the past. You know, I don't think good stories and, and what makes for good stories is going to change too much. You know, that's like very true to our souls, but the technology and the way in which we tell these stories is changing rapidly. But I want to know your thoughts. What do you make of all this? Do you think 
the future might look like these really immersive experiences where individuals and communities are owning assets within their stories and coming together and collectively building and participating and have some form of ownership over and value back from and say in, um, or even just like by holding your, you know, like saying, Hey, I'm a real big part of this world. This represents me kind of like the way that you have a poster, right? You'd stare at an old, Star Wars poster and just dream of that world, right? With your mind. Well, now you don't just dream, you can just go into it and just completely be immersed to a degree that was never really possible before. What are your thoughts? Let's talk about it. Hope you all have a great day. Talk again soon. Take care.